Hello everybody, how are you doing? Uh, if you will indulge me for a moment here, I'd like to read you a story for the holidays. It's a story I think the entire family can enjoy, and, and I hope you will. Uh, it's called The Christmas Visit. Once upon a time, there were two young cousins named Molly and Hudson, and their dog, a beagle named Daisy. It was two days before Christmas, and school was on vacation. The three of them were in the backyard building a snowman with their friends Stephen the Gnome and Amelia the Fairy. Hudson and Molly dressed in their warmest clothes. They lifted the snowman's head on top of its shoulders. Stephen, wearing a fetching scarf and his fancy hat with the feather in it, placed pieces of coal on the ch snowman's chest for buttons. Amelia wore a pretty green dress with white fur around the hem and her arms and, and her wings. She flapped her wings so fast they buzzed as she flew around the snowman's head, tying a scarf around his neck. Daisy lopped through the snow with a carrot in her mouth so they could give the snowman a nose. Once they were finished, they stood back and smiled at their hard work. He looks happy, said Molly. He looks a, a lot taller than the one we built last year, said Hudson. Wolf, said Daisy. Again, I'm sorry I forgot his hat at home, said Stephen. You can bring it tonight for the sleepover, said Amelia. Stephen agreed, and everyone was happy. Hudson's mother came to the back door and called to Molly, Hudson, and Daisy. It was time to go inside and get some cocoa. Can you come in too, Molly, asked Stephen and Amelia. Please, said Hudson. My mother made her special honey cookies that you like. Stephen and Amelia thought about the offer. Woof, said Daisy. You're right, Daisy, said Stephen, who, like all gnomes, was fluent in dog. We have to go home to prepare for a visit from the Christmas werewolves. Oh my, that is tonight, said Amelia, her wings fluttering a little faster. What are Christmas werewolves, asked Hudson. I don't think I'd like to meet a werewolf, said Molly, even if they are Christmas werewolves. It's okay, said Stephen. Christmas werewolves are friendly. It's all a part of the peace accords, said Amelia. What peace accords, asked Hudson. Unlike today, where you two are, and Daisy are good friends, said Stephen, there was a time when man and beast were at, more, at war. Was it a bad war, asked Molly. They're seldom a good one, said Amelia, though truthfully, this was one of the worst. Wolf, said Daisy, nodding solemnly. That's right, Daisy, said Stephen. Cities were destroyed, forests were toppled. The ancient cat city of Bastin disappeared into the sands of Egypt west of Cairo, said Amelia. And man's glorious city of Atlantis sank below the waves of the ocean, said Stephen. That's awful, said Hudson. How did it end, asked Mom. 1,800 years ago, a peace was negotiated by Amber, Queen of the Fairies, said Amelia. Ever since then, there's been peace, said Stephen. I'm glad it ended well, said Molly. It did, said, it, said Amelia. But why does that mean we'll be visited by a werewolf tonight, asked Hudson. Well, as part of the accord, a Christmas werewolf eat, visits each house with a pet, said Stephen. He asks the pet how the humans have, tre have been treating them. It only happens once every 30 years or so, said, Z said Amelia. There will be a full moon on Christmas, and then the werewolves can visit. You said you have to get ready, said Molly. That's right, said Hudson. Should we do anything? Well, this tradition that you leave a bowl of water and a snack for the werewolves, said Amelia. That's what we're going to do, said Stephen. Hudson's mother called from the house again. We should go, said Hudson. We'll see you tonight, said Molly. We'll be back after your parents go to sleep, said Amelia. I'll remember to bring the hat from my house, said Stephen. The night everyone, that night, everyone gathered in Hudson's room for their annual Christmas sleepover. Molly and Hudson shared the large bed in the guest room. They curled up under the big fancy quilt with Amelia and Stephen lying under the covers nearby. Daisy was curled up at the foot of the bed, snoring gently. It had taken some convincing, but Hudson had gotten his parents to put out a bowl of water with some ice. It sat on a small table with a plate of cheese cubes from a tray the family had gotten for their holiday party the next day. The night was cold, but the court was, quilt was warm. Crunch. 
Molly froze. The quilt sudden froze under the quilt, suddenly wide awake. She thought she just heard something. She looked at Hudson under the covers and saw that he had woken as well. The two of them strained their ears, listening for the sound in the room. A long time passed and they heard nothing. Perhaps they imagined it. Crunch. There it was again. Was it the sound of someone in the room? Molly lifted the covers just a little bit and looked into the darkness beyond. There was nothing there. It was... Wait! There was a red glow. It cleared the darkness. And then the light went away. Hudson gripped his pillow and Molly took hold of hers. They silently mouthed to each other. One, two, three. They leapt from under the cover, swinging their pillows at the huge shadow in the room. As they jumped from the bed, they knocked Stephen from under the covers and onto the floor. Stephen sprung to his feet and grabbed the needle-sized sword from his pile of clothes. Amelia pushed her way from the covers and rose into the air, her wings glowing bright enough to light the room. Molly and Hudson gasped. In the center of the room stood a massive werewolf. He was so tall that he had to hunch over to avoid the ceiling fan. His pants were straining against his legs. The lower halves of each pant leg shredded and torn to the knees. One of his feet was bare and the other had the remains of a white sneaker that had ripped, in, ripped from, the, from the inside. Even if it had been whole, the children doubted that the massive claw that pierced through the end would have kept, been kept inside. Around his waist was a bright blue fanny pack fixed loosely in place. A bright red sweater with white and green repeating pattern of Christmas bulbs was pulled tight across his chest. On the front of the sweater was sewn a picture of a smiling reindeer, its head jutting out of the inside of a great woolly Christmas wreath. As they stared at the werewolf in his sweater, the reindeer's nose glowed briefly. The werewolf held the bowl of water in its massive hand. Its head bowed down and its tongue sticking out midway to the water. The werewolf pulled his tongue back into his mouth and swallowed. Um, happy holidays, said the werewolf. Stephen straightened and returned his sword to its scabbard. He bowed to the werewolf. My apologies, sir. I was woken suddenly and did not realize who you were. Yes, yes, said Amelia. We are very sorry. Wolf said it. The werewolf nodded. It's all right, ma'am. It happens from time to time. The wolf started to unzip his fanny pack. I have some sleep dust from the Sandman in here. You know Kevin? asked Hudson. How is he? asked Molly. The wolf paused. How do you know Kevin the Sandman? he asked. He helped our friend Morgan see Santa two years ago, said Hudson. And last year he also introduced us to Scott. That was so Grandma could see Granddad again, said Molly. The werewolf knelt down. Are you the the ones who braved the dreamscapes so a sick friend could see Santa? Yes, said Hudson. The ones who gave up their Christmas wish for their grandmother, asked the werewolf. We did, said Molly. Who entered the cave of lost items to find the fairy queen's ball? Wolf, said Daisy. The werewolf bowed his head. Then you must be Hudson, Molly, and Daisy. It is my honor to meet you, said the werewolf. Wolf, asked Daisy. Of course, said the werewolf. Where are my manners? My name is Keith. It's a pleasure to meet you, Keith, said Molly, as she curtsied. Can you stay long, asked Hudson. Oh, I would love to, said Keith, but I have many houses to visit, many pets to talk to before the sun rises. We understand, said Molly. Maybe next time, said Hudson. Maybe, said Keith. Keith turned to Daisy and said, Grrr. Wolf, said Daisy. Grrr, said Keith. Wolf, said Daisy. Grrr, asked Keith. Wolf, said Daisy, nodding her head. Keith stood up. Thank you all. I'll file my report with the head office. We'll know how everything went in the morning. But what happened, asked Hudson. I cannot say, said Keith. You'll have to wait for morning like everyone else. Keith lifted the bowl of water to his mouth and lapped up some of the last of their water. Then, with a loud crunch, he bit one of the ice cubes in half. Thank you for the, uh, the water. The ice was particularly welcome. Cold water is more refreshing. You're welcome, said Molly. Daisy likes ice in her water, so I thought you might like some too. I also like the cheese cubes, said Keith. I appreciate different varieties. I wasn't certain if you like... 
certain types. This way you had choices, said Hudson. Thank you, said Keith. Usually all I get is American, which is nice, but variety is good too. Keith smiled at the children and helped each of them back into bed, tucked them under the covers. Then he tucked Stephen and Amelia under the blankets. Lastly, Daisy jumped up onto the bed. Daisy walked up to Hudson and Molly. She licked each one on the nose. Then she walked in a small circle before being careful not to step on Amelia or Stephen. When she finished, Daisy lay down and rested her head on her paws. Keith walked over and slid a window open. Good night, said Keith. Then he climbed out the window, shut, and locked it behind him. As the friends lay in bed, gently drifting off to sleep, Hudson asked Stephen. Yes, said Stephen. You could understand what they said, asked Hudson. Yes, said Stephen. Can you tell us, asked Molly. No, said Stephen. It's not allowed under the accord, said Amelia. You'll have to wait until tomorrow. Daisy yawned. Soon the rest of them yawned and slowly fell asleep one by one. The next morning the friends woke and found something had happened in the night. The bowl that had been filled with water for Keith the night before was now full of candy, treats, and a squeaky dog bone. What's all that? asked Hudson. Where did it come from? asked Molly. Hooray! said Amelia, her wings sparkling in a rainbow pattern. Good show! said Stephen, tossing his pillow into the air. Wolf! said Daisy. What happened? asked Molly. The peace continues, said Amelia. How do you know? asked Hudson. Well, Daisy's still here, said Stephen. Plus, you've been rewarded for your good treatment and loving care of Daisy. That's what the bowl of things is for, said Amelia. The candy and treats are for you, said Daisy. Stephen. Wolf said Daisy, taking the squeaky toy from the bowl and happily chomping down on it. That's right, said Stevie. Said, what do you what do you mean our treatment of Daisy? asked Hudson. Well you take care of her, said Amelia. You feed her, walk her, clean up after her, and play with her, said Stephen. Squeak barked Daisy, her new toy still in her mouth. Stephen smiled, that's right. She said that it's because you love each other. Every pet and child that love one another plays together and treats each other well is how the peace is maintained, said Amelia. As long as people take care of their pets and love them, play with them and help them, the world remains at peace, said Stephen. Molly and Hudson hug Daisy. Daisy drops her new toy to give each child a big lick on their faces. After breakfast, all of them went outside to play with Daisy's new toy and put the fine hat that Stephen had brought on top of the snowman, finishing him. And that was how their day went, playing, laughing, and loving each other all in order to keep the peace. Well, thank you everybody. That's the end. And uh, I do appreciate you staying with me this far. Uh, I will wish you right now a happy holidays to everyone. May the Christmas werewolves find you joyous. And let there be peace on earth and goodwill to man and beast. I uh, am very happy you joined me. And I will now leave you. Good night.